everybody. It's me. It's Ann. I'm just hanging out. Yeah, have a look at the background. It's the new background du jour. I still haven't quite finished it. So I'm just kind of doing a little yakety kind of thing while I put enough stuff on to go out and do some stuff. You know, like just go for a walk and that kind of thing. Because it's a gorgeous day out. Yes, yeah, so I just mixed up a couple of things. I mixed up the Elf uh, Beauty Shield Level 50 SPF Primer with some of the Beauty Shield Level 50 SPF Moisturizer and made my own version of a BB cream. Because the primer is really thick stuff. And the moisturizer is really thin stuff. But they both do this, this little bit of a tint thing. And yes, the doggy still runs behind the, the curtains and makes everything go kawagali. I picked the uh, backdrop curtain up at a restore. We went to LeGrand yesterday to do some shopping and stuff. Was it yesterday or Friday? I don't remember. It's Sunday currently. No, we haven't filmed the new pic yet. I'm finishing up editing and such on the dandelion salad. So we should have that one shortly. Meester's feeling a little bit under it this, this afternoon, so he's getting kind of a slow start. We'll get the last of the merry month of May he chose what series picked today. You may not get your first look out of today, depending on what time we finally get his part done. You may just get this one, which, yeah. Anyway, one of the things I wanted to talk about while I was doing this <clears throat> is uh, this one's not really a drama issue. It just isn't. But some people are being concerned and it's concerning a brand that I normally have absolutely no trouble with. In fact, it's one of my favorite product lines, partly because it's just good stuff and partly because of the price point. And that would be Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild has been constantly showing themselves as cruelty free for quite a while now. Even though they are manufactured in China because they had not been selling in mainland China, it changed the rules, which meant that they didn't have to be tested on animals. So they could just, you know, be manufactured there, shipped over here, no animal testing, all good. Now, I thought this was a wonderful thing. Come to find out that last year, last year, they started a pilot program with a retailer that is U.S. and China. It's one of the drugstore companies over there. They started a pilot program in 30 stores 
to see if the wet and wild would sell in mainland China. Now, technically, the materials are still being made without having to go through animal testing as part of the manufacturing, technically. <clears throat> so, yeah, technically, they are still on the cruelty-free list. However, because it's now being sold in mainland China, that means if a Chinese citizen has an issue or claims an issue with any of the wet and wild products, the Chinese government can then at that point just walk in snatch everything off of the shelves that they want to test and then they do aftermarket animal testing. Now I'm not going to claim to be the biggest animal advocate because I am a carnivore. If that upsets some of you, I'm sorry. But I do eat meat. Not a lot, but I do eat it. Can't eat a lot, it's too expensive. The other thing is it's not good for my cholesterol. But I have never been drawn toward vegetarian and I've definitely not drawn towards vegan. Now, I'm not saying they're bad. I'm not saying they're awful. I'm not saying they're wrong. I have just never been drawn that way. It just has never pulled to me hard enough that I decided I needed to go do that. In the meantime, back to Wet n Wild. Wet n Wild cannot stop the Chinese government from doing aftermarket testing on animals if it's selling in mainland China. Its products can be pulled for aftermarket testing if there is a complaint, a report, or considering some of the politics going on, if they just get a burr up their butt. Since her political leadership are all just jacking each other up. Anyway, and they are, they're just messing with each other up one side and down the other, which is just absolutely ludicrous. I'm just. I'm seriously done with a lot of our politicians. But this means that because of their choice to sell in mainland China, Wet n Wild knows very well that their products could be pulled 
for animal testing. Now, animal testing in makeup at this point in our technology level is cruel for no good reason. I mean, at this point, you could take a sample of cells from the person who had the reaction, grow a specimen in the lab, and specifically test there to see what kind of reaction that person had without causing any harm to any living being attached to any sort of brain. There is no sentience to a lab-grown skin specimen. They could use the laboratory-created analogs that are kind of stockpiled for this kind of testing. They could use computer simulations based on molecular structure, which is one of the major ways that medicine's being tested. First, you start looking at the so the molecular construction to make sure that it's not a poison pattern. Believe it or not, poisons have specific molecular structures and patterns that can be recognized easily. There's no way to completely test to make sure that every person or critter on the planet would be safe using some of these chemical mixes. It just, there's no way to make it that foolproof. It just, you can't. There are things on this planet that, if you're allergic to them, you're allergic to them. Just, yeah. And people will look at you funny until you can go, yep, here you go. Here's my test results. Are we happy now? Things like, I'm allergic to acetaminophen, Tylenol. I want to tell you how much that annoys the heck out of doctors because Aspirin is one of the medications I have to take for my heart situation. And they would prefer that I take something like Tylenol for any further pain situation. You know, like my arthritis and that kind of thing. They would prefer general pain and fever control and that kind of thing to be done with Tylenol. Well, I can't. I get a rash and no pain relief, no fever relief. 
That's the way it is. So, I have to be very careful about how much of any other type of pain reliever or fever reducer I use. I have to be very careful about it so that I don't overstress my system by putting too much aspirin in. <clears throat> it just is that way. So, you know, animal testing is not going to help the Chinese figure out what to do about any product. Animal testing is way, way, way gone in any usable sense has been for a long time. So, yeah, I have an issue with any place or any company that specifically agrees to the understanding that animal testing may happen if they're selling in some place like mainland China. It's an old technology. It's a cruel technology. There's no real scientific reason for it. In some cases, I think that China may be maintaining the animal testing only because it helps them keep down a vermin ratio because they've got an overabundance of some animals that are not otherwise useful and I'm going find another way <laughs> just find another way to control your critter populations this is not the way The fact that Wet n Wild has decided to do that pilot program is not entirely why I'm peeing at them. I'm very unhappy with them because they never said anything. Now, for some people, this is a break point. If your stuff is being tested on animals at any point, regardless of how or why or whether or not your company agreed, but there's animal testing going on, with your stuff, then your consumers have a right to know if, especially if you're showing yourself as cruelty free, because you've made a decision to put yourself in a situation that could include animal testing. 
whether you agree to it or not, you have agreed to the understanding that, yeah, you won't have to pay for it, you don't have to initiate it, but your stuff could be used on animals in a really, really, really unfortunate way. That bugs me a lot, that we were not given all of the info so that we could make educated consumer decisions based on all the facts. Like I said, some people, for some people, if the company that their self is not the ones doing it, and, you know, haven't initiated it themselves. Some people can kind of overlook that, be okay with it, go on about it. For some people, that is an absolute break point. And whether it's your break point or not, you have to understand that for the people that it is a break point, that's their decision, that's their choice, and they've made it based on their own factors and issues. And nobody else has a right to say anything to them other than, I see your point. You don't have to agree. However, you do have to see their point, allow them their point, and let them make their decisions based on their point. If they try to jump up and down on you, yeah, you can get a little more interesting <clears throat> in your discussion if you need to. But, because the information was not readily available and has not been available for over a year now since this pilot program got started I'm not I'm not going to I'm not throwing away my wet and wild I spent good money on it I'm going to use it I will probably not repurchase it. But I will also not be using any of the wet and wild materials on my channel. I am not going to even passively rep material that I don't believe has earned my trust. Like I said, I will use up what I have left. Because I can't afford to just throw this stuff away and go out and replace it. I don't have that kind of money. However, until this mess that Wet n Wild has put themselves into without a word, yeah, there's probably somebody in their marketing division that said, don't say anything, they'll never know. They have yet to figure out, apparently, that there are plenty of people in this community who will do things like go out and dig for research and then tell the rest of us what's going down. Now, I picked this up 
based on a bulletin from Genlove's Reviews. And if I remember correctly, she picked it up from somebody who's been doing research, lots and lots of research, and has contacted Wet n Wild and ask them about this stuff because she's got pictures of the Chinese sales displays with location markers to show that, yeah, we really are talking about being in mainland China. Not just, you know, it's not like Hong Kong, which is a whole different ball of beans. <clears throat> but they basically told the researcher that as far as they're concerned, since they're not doing any direct testing themselves, they're still considering themselves cruelty free. And I'm going, ah, uh, no. No, I believe there are some disagreements here with that particular theory. They knew from the get-go that what they were doing if it got known, would upset some of their clients. However, the lure of the open marketplace in mainland China for a new customer base, Oh, um, well, yeah, apparently that kind of money was more than they could resist. So. <sighs> I'm not impressed. I have already taken even my wet and wild brushes out of the setup that I use here when I'm filming. I've got all of it put away somewhere else so that, yes, if I go to use it so that I'm not wasting the product and I'm doing something where I'm not showing, see, like this, this, you know, showing <clears throat> people what I'm using. This is Rimmel, by the way. I know it looks a lot like the package for the Wet n' Wild that I picked up fairly recently. But no, it's not. It's Rimmel. I could afford to replace that. Like, now. rest of the wet and wild stuff it's like they've already got my money on the stuff that's in the drawer they're throwing it away is not going to change the fact that they've already got my money however 
not repurchasing. Will make a difference. In my case, a small difference. But that's another few dollars they're not getting. So I hope their mainland China market takes care of anything they are going to lose from the cruelty-free market here in the U.S. and in Canada and in Europe and anywhere else that they're selling that there are people who are concerned with the cruelty-free issue. I hope, for their sake, if they want to keep their company going, that the business trade-off works. I am not going to curse them and wish them ill and hope that the business closes and all that other stuff. That's not my job. And it means I would be injuring people that work for the company and depend on the company to be able to pay the rent and buy food. That kind of thing. And it's not them that the, that's the problem. It's the guys in the suits that made this kind of decision. So, yeah, I hope whoever thunk this up and thought it was a good idea gets their backside handed to them because they lied, straight up lied about what was going on. And I got no use for straight up liars, none. Anyway, now I'm probably not going to do much of anything else. I'm not worried about blusher or anything like that. Mainly because at this point I probably won't be going out because there was a kaboom and now it's raining cats and dogs. Anyway, <clears throat> my kitties and my puppies. Yes. And the poor little other lab critters. But that's my considered opinion on dealing with wet and wild lying through their teeth about their animal cruelty status. If your stuff is in a position where even though you're not doing it, you're not initiating it, you're not paying for it, but you specifically put your merchandise into a marketplace that puts animals at risk of being test subjects to keep your stuff in that marketplace, you are not cruelty free and I'm very disappointed in what and very disappointed on top of everything else they lied to us. they lied to us Some marketing twerp decided it was okay to lie to us about it.
and the other executives went along with it. Bye bye, wet and wild. Been nice knowing you. Straighten your ish out, and maybe we'll see each other again sometime. most of the law. Yes, I've had my sides trimmed down. I've been futzing with my hair. I wanted it to stand up and be silly. Love you guys. Do your research before you purchase. Make your choices that you can live with. Be good.